Hola, ciao, what's good? I am Kelly Peritelli, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and like this video for the algorithms and to help support my growth on my channel by clicking the red button I logged in under your Gmail YouTube account. Thank you for joining and giving me your time and energy here today. I am making this video today to talk about uh, Saxe Human and Cristo Blanco outside of Cusco City uh, in Peru, South America, my most recent uh, out of the country excursion this year, which in 2022, I've actually been to Spain. I lived there briefly for about four weeks. I lived in Spain. I was in Italy earlier this year. I was in Spain and um, I was in Peru, South America in August, 2022. So. Um, some of these uh, videos that I'm going to be showing were filmed in August 2022 when I went to Sac de Human and Cristo Blanco uh, outside of the city of Cusco in Peru, South America. Um, this uh, summer for us in North America, although it is their winter in South America, I went in August 2022. So um, I am filming this today in November 2022 to tell a little bit about my story looking back in hindsight, which is kind of how I write and how I tell stories um, looking back on my experiences in the recent past. So um, that's how I wrote my book, Testimonials, which there is a link to in the description of this video. Please click on the link and help support a local indie author. I am a self-published author through Barnes and Nobles and Schuler's local independent bookstores in Michigan here in the United States of America and in a couple of countries in Europe and now Canada. So. Uh, my book, Testimonials, is a compilation of poetry and non-fictional short stories written throughout my life. Um, and there is going to be a link in the description of this video to help and support for anyone who is interested in reading, who loves poetry. Um, and if you're interested in a little taste of what's in that book, I have a video um, on my channel of Spoken Word and why I published my book and created my channel. Today's video... Um, is about two places that I'm going to incorporate into one video as they are basically right next to each other, just outside of Cusco, technically in the city of Cusco, but um, the way the city is built, it's in a very high mountainous region and the city center is kind of at the bottom of the hill, um, encompassed by all these mountains that range uh, at about 3.5 thousand meters. thousand five hundred meters which is really high compared to the altitude in Michigan which I've talked about in my other videos but um Saxe Human and I believe that's how it's pronounced but honestly there's a few different pronunciations of the word I looked it up on YouTube um, I mean first of all in, in Cusco Peru you've got Spanish Espanol is the number one language right um, uno idioma which is the first language right or primero idioma which is first language in Spanish um, and then you've got the ancient Incan language, um, which I forgot what it's called, but I heard it in a documentary and I read it in one of the books I was reading about this uh, sacred holy area. It's either Sac Se Human or Sac Se Human, Human. I'm not sure, but it literally has the word human in it, just spelled differently uh, in English. Cristo Blanco in Espanol is white Christ in English um, translation. So it's basically a giant statue of Christ going like this. Uh, It's all white and it's lit up at night. It's very beautiful. So um, Cristo Blanco is at the top of the hill in Cusco. So basically, as I was saying, you've got all these huge mountains at about 3,500 meters in the city of Cusco in the, the main square inside downtown Cusco um, in the center at kind of like the bottom of the hill. And then at the top of one of the hills is where Sac de Human is located. And Cristo Blanco, the statue, is right next to Sac de Human on the top of this hill looking out over Cusco, looking out over a beautiful view which I'll show you uh, in just a second here in these pictures 
Um, so, Saxe Human, if you look at like top tourist attractions in Cusco, of course Machu Picchu is going to come up because that's a two, three hour train right away. Of course, um, the Sacred Valley Holy Lands, which I've already posted other videos about, is going to come up when you search top attractions, Rainbow Mountain. And then Saxe Human is the main one that comes up um, when you search top of tourist attractions in Cusco, and that is the closest one to the center city. So, I posted another video on my channel of Jose Antonio Cusco, which was a hotel review from a customer review um, because that's the hotel I stayed in and I was lucky enough to have a room facing Saxe Human and Cristo Blanco so the view from my room it's really hard to see in the pictures that I took and the pictures don't really do it justice but the view from the hotel room that I had you could see Cristo Blanco at the top of the hill um, during the day it was like a speck of white you know along the horizon at the top of the mountain and at night it was all lit up in bright white and it and it just stands um kind of like the one that's a wonder of the world in brazil um the capital of brazil has that famous statue that became a wonder of the world of christ and it's kind of like that because it's sitting up over the city like that so there must be a theme in south america with cristo blancos um or um statues of christ so um yeah so it's looking out over the city and there's a couple other smaller crosses next to it that i took pictures of So the first day, I went with my Italian cousins to Saxe Human because they had come from Italy and I met them from Michigan. I traveled by myself as a solo female traveler. Um, it was a really good experience. But yeah, I went the first day we went to Saxe Human, right? And so they are right next to each other, right? Cristo Blanco is right next to Saxe Human, right? So the first day though, we went to Saxe Human. So you can see Cristo Blanco from Saxe Human when you're up on these mountains at 4,500 meters, 3,500 meters in some spots. It's very hilly and diverse. So um, we went there and the thing about Saxe Human is, and that's how I'm going to pronounce it, if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, someone please tell me because again there's four languages that it's pronounced in. Basic Latin, Spanish, uh, English here, and the um, ancient Incan language and that's probably the truest, oldest uh, most authentic pronunciation and that's how I'd like to know how to pronounce it But everything I've heard is Saxe Human or Human Saxe Human, so that's just what I'm calling it. But anyway um, When we went up there It's a famous tourist location globally internationally because um, there's all these documentaries on National Geographic and if you look on YouTube there's all these stories about how these giant stone slabs of rock they cannot figure out how in God's name this was made if there wasn't alien technology involved like that's what these documentaries are about and it talks about how like we didn't have the technology then to build those. We didn't have any equipment. We didn't have the machinery. Um, in sheer manpower alone, it just doesn't seem plausible that these giant slabs of stone were perfectly carved and ingrained and put in together with mortar um, that were bigger than like giant human bodies, like 10 human bodies. Like some of the pieces of stones are much larger than any human body. And so they tried to say that there were pictures taken of people with with ropes like pulling them wrapped around the rock and a bunch of humans pulling them like in old Egyptian times or something um, and then other people came back other historians came back and said there's no possible way that those pictures are real because this isn't plausible it doesn't make sense it's not in line with reality and what they would have been able to do okay I am here with my Italian cousins in Saxe Human and this is the first up and uh, you can see the mountain walls behind me and they say it's a mystery they don't know how they were built uh, and some people believe that it's alien technology or superhuman uh, species because they didn't have uh, the technology or the equipment or the machinery to make these so it's uh, kind of a mystery this is just outside of Cusco. Um, 
So it was kind of funny because all these men, like, I just noticed while we were there, like, because the stones are in the city of Cusco too and we have pictures of it, but it's the same type of stones and the same size stones that are in the city of Cusco that are up on top of Saxe Human. And I just noticed that all these men were like so, in particular, were like so fascinated. Like they were staring at the rocks and they were like petting them and touching them and trying to feel them and measure their shapes and sizes and everything. And they just got so excited and I'm thinking, why? are they so excited about rocks like the rocks you know and <laughs> I'm American you know I mean they are really beautiful and powerful and I was much more interested in the energy that was there that was strong and powerful and I can feel a lot of energy here when they started talking about how they believe a lot of people believe even there the ancient Incan people the locals believe there was some sort of supernatural power okay some sort of superhuman strength and energy and may or may not be alien technology came in and moved these things and that also may be what happened in the area of the sacred valley with set with uh, Pisac and Moray and all those places that look like you know, uh, what are those things called in the farmlands where there's like crop crop circles or whatever? That's what they look like because it's like it doesn't like if you were to see that from the sky, if you were to see these stone walls that they built from the sky and the way that the land was protruded, if you were to see an aerial view from like a drone or a plane or something like looking down it would look like some ancient alien technology carved it into the ground like it's that intricate and detailed and the fact that they did that supposedly in the time that they did that astonishes people to this day and it's all over youtube like there's documentaries and all these things on tv made of made of this like it's a really fascinating part of the globe right So anyways, um, I was more interested in the fact that the natural elements seemed to be calling to me when I was there. Like it was so windy and I'll show you videos. Like it was so windy. I could not only, I could, not only was I like crying because the wind was blowing. Like I struggle with allergies like just a little bit, but the wind was blowing. You know how like when it's just really cold or the wind is blowing so hard that your eyes just start watering. Like it was so windy and we were at such a high altitude. Okay. And we were in like an open area in Saxe Human because like there was trees right in the far off distance there were trees but where we were it's like up on a mountain and there weren't trees like in Saxe Human so I could the wind was blowing super hard super loud it was like the air the breath of life some type of energy was there okay so we are at Saxe Human again it's so windy here today that my eyes are watering a little bit but it's extremely beautiful in Peru ancient uh, beautiful stones that they uh, still believe is a mystery they don't know how they built it without technology or machines I'm not crying it's just the wind <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy to be here I feel like a great energy here it's beautiful uh, Peru is absolutely incredible in the landscape um, drastically changes in fluctuation when the sun is out it's very hot in the sun but now when the sun goes down it's very cold 
not only were my eyes watering, but I could barely hear myself talk because it was so windy. Um, and then the trees that were in the distance, I swear, like, I believe that the energy is real and that all life has a level or degree of that energy and awareness to some degree. And I swear the trees were, like, talking. Like, they, they were making noises for sure. Like, you know how, like, when you hear the wind going so hard through the trees or the branches and the leaves that like you'll almost hear like it almost sounds like a cracking or like a howling type noise but it's not the wind it's the trees that the wind is going through like it was like I don't know how to explain it but it was almost like the trees were like humming to themselves or like they were like talking somehow it was really weird like this like awareness just came over me that like life around me was awake and I don't know how to explain it other than that. Like the energy was very powerful there. And I knew in that moment that I was supposed to be there. Okay. And I remember like you walk to the top of the hill right at the highest viewpoint from Saxe Human. And you can see the whole city of Cusco with all the mountains in the background. And the part that's carved into the mountains that says Viva La Peru. And then right over here, if you're standing facing the city from the top of that hill where Saxe Human is to your left, a la izquierda en español, which is to your left in Spanish, you can see Cristo Blanco on the hill, right? And so they're literally like right next to each other on this hilltop looking over the city, right? But they're two different tourist spots and they have two different entry points and they require two different tickets. Now, the first day, like I said, we only went to Saxe Human, but I could see Cristo Blanco over there and I could see people gathering around it and I could see all these like shops and people selling stuff around there. Like there was a lot of stuff and uh, action going on over there, you know? So I thought to myself, I want to go over there, but my cousins didn't want to go there that day because they had other, they had other things in mind and they wanted to make this climb down the hill, right? We ended up walking like seven miles. I don't know what it is in kilometers because we Americans don't use kilometers and every other country in the world does use kilometers to measure uh, distance. And we only use, um, we're literally like the only people on earth that use miles. It's really funny. Um, like everyone in the rest of the earth is like, America so spoiled and different. They have to have their own metric system when the whole rest of the world uses kilometers. Really, you should know that. It's funny. That's how they look at us. But anyway, um, Miles, like we walked about seven miles. So you do the you do the calculations to kilometers. I'm sorry, I don't have that calculation on me. <laughs> we walked from the top of Saxe Human all the way down these stairs that lead into the heart of the city, right? But it's way on top of that hill, and. So from the top of Saxe Human all the way down to the city of Cusco, it was it was about seven miles, right? And I luckily I had my good tennis shoes on. Um, luckily, you know, I was with them. I wasn't alone. And it was it was coming into nighttime. It was coming into dark. We saw the sunset from at top. Um, but like we just kept going, and I was thinking, like, are we gonna get a taxi? Like, and I don't mind walking because I lost a lot of weight on that trip. I think I already said that. Like, I lost good weight. I like staying active on those type of vacations. We had good food, we felt good, we had fresh air, the environment's really good there, the food's really good quality, so I was fine with it. But yeah, we walked all the way from the top, and there's this trail that goes down from the top of Saxe Human to the top of that hill where Cristo Blanco is, too. And it's like stairs that just go, I can't imagine walking up the stairs to get there, but we went all the way down the stairs through the city, winding roads, past these beautiful homes, looking out over the mountains, all the different colors, all the artwork, all the restaurants, all the shops, all the stone slabs and marbles and beautiful red brick roads and everything, kind of like how you see in Europe, like you can tell it's the old world um i have some pictures on here and so um we walked all the way down it probably took us like an hour and a half two hours and then i think we got food at the bottom or we went shopping at the bottom but by the time we got to the bottom i was tired <laughs>
Um, but yeah, Saxe Human, I think it was like 70 soles, which is the currency in Peru, soles, um, which is only like 20, 25 dollars, okay, 15 to 25 dollars. It fluctuates, it changes, you know, the exchange rate. Um, but soles is the currency there, and when I went, $75 was 250 soles, okay? So the dollar is worth more, right? So, um, yeah, the sole is not worth that much compared to the dollar. So that's why you get a lot more with less. Does that make sense? The currency exchange rate is sometimes still to this day. Uh, but that's how I wrap my mind around it. You know what I mean? So it was like 75 soles to go in there, which sounds like a lot, but that's really only like 20 bucks. Um, for the ticket to the tourist ticket to see this once in a lifetime opportunity is so beautiful in the view alone of seeing the city is like so it's so beautiful it's like magical so if I were to review this and tell you if you should go or not yes especially if you're staying in Cusco for like an extended period of time because all the tourist places basically are coming right out of Cusco to get to Machu Picchu to get to Aguas Calientes to get to the Sacred Valley to get to the Rainbow Mountain you know um, so you might as well do Saxe Huma which is right there in the city the stars at night um i've never seen that many stars in one sky and i really wanted to say that and make sure that i said that on youtube because like we live in michigan so it's a really low altitude and i never really thought about it before why we don't see that many stars they say you can see the stars better in the country where there's less lights, there's less businesses, there's less action going on, you know. Um, you can see it better in like farm country lands, which the thing is though, this wasn't, this was a city, right? The city of Cusco. In the city of Cusco, I've never seen that many stars in one sky. Um, and of course you're closer because of the altitude, you know, you're higher up, so you're closer to them, um, so to speak, but it's, I've ne it was so beautiful, okay? Everything about Peru, it's just such a beautiful place, like especially those areas around Cusco in the Sacred Valley. It's just so, so beautiful. But yeah, Saxe Human was um, definitely, I'm really glad that we went there. My Italian cousins were really impressed. They loved it. We took a lot of good pictures. Um, and then the next day is when I went back to Cristo Blanco by myself because they had their own itinerary and they were going somewhere else in Peru with the Italian company that made their itinerary. They already had their own plan, right? So I had time to myself and I wanted to go back and I knew it was only a taxi ride up there because I wasn't going to climb up those steps knowing what, how far it was since we had already climbed down. So I had the hotel at Jose Antonio Cusco help me call a taxi because I was finding that when they called the taxis for me, I was paying less than when I tried to call them myself. She's a tourist or something like that, so we're going to charge her more. I don't know, but every time the hotel did it, it was $10 to $15 cheaper. So anyways, I had them because I learned by that point what was happening. So the hotel people called me a taxi and I only had to pay 10 soles, which is like seriously like a dollar. Um, with the exchange rate, it was like 10 soles, yeah. He drove me up there, right? And he, the taxi driver barely spoke any English, but I speak enough Spanish to be like, you know, yo quiero ir a la Cristo Blanco, like I wanna go to Cristo Blanco, por favor, please. You know what I mean? Um, and so he took me up there. It's a beautiful taxi ride because again, you're going up these hills and you're just climbing higher and higher and higher to get up to the top where, where these two tourist attractions are. Okay, I am here at Cristo Blanco. Um, it was a beautiful day, it was sunny, there was people all around taking photos, as most touristy places there are. Um, like, there were little shops and tents set up where people, and blankets set up where people were selling stuff right along there, which was very common. In Peru, just outdoor sales everywhere, just people setting up stuff. Like, literally just putting a blanket down and putting all their merchandise and stuff that they were selling down in the blanket near a tourist spot, and being like, hi miss. Like, whenever you even look at something, they're gonna say hi to you, try to sell you something. But it's beautiful, handmade, crafted, beautiful, local um, jewelry and art. And anyway, so um, when you get up to Cristo Blanco, the taxi driver basically, um, it must be that gas was expensive there for them or they don't make a lot of money, I'm not sure. But he really wanted to stay there and wait for me. So he was like, how long? 
you know, it took it took me a minute to get exactly what he was saying because my Spanish isn't as good as his and he barely spoke any English at all. But I figured out that he wanted to stay there and he didn't want to have to go and get another taxi ride somewhere. He was like, how long are you going to be here? Because that way I can be your taxi ride back to the hotel. And I was thinking in my mind at first that it was... Um, that he was gonna leave and that I would have to call another one, but he was like, I'll stay and I'm like, okay So I was like, okay, un hora, por favor, one hour So I stayed up there for an hour. I took my pictures. I saw the other crosses I saw the view of Saxe Human from Cristo Blanco and I saw the entire city of Cusco's view from there This is a beautiful view of Cusco from the top of this mountain and these are some beautiful crosses next to the white Christ Which they call Cristo Blanco in Espanol so it's very beautiful and this uh, statue of Christ, the white Christ Cristo Blanco, can be seen from very far away as it is high up on the hill on the north side of Cusco. And I can see it from my hotel room, which I believe I have already filmed. Um, but even at night, it's so white in color that even at night, it looks like it's lit up. It's really spectacular. Um, you can see it from far away at night and during the day. It stands out like a sore thumb up on the mountain. Even with all of this vast landscape of houses and businesses and restaurants and lights all up into the mountains here in Cusco. Uh, again, it is up high on the mountain on the north side next to Sac Sehuman, which is right over there and which we saw yesterday. But today I wanted to get a closer look at Cristo Blanco. Um, it was a really beautiful um, statue cross up close so I'm really glad I saw it because even just to spend time by myself up there looking out at that view of that city was worth it to me um, because like I, I'm a person who actually loves solitude sometimes a good portion of the time actually because I'm an empath and an artist and it's nothing against like my Italian cousins or anyone but there's just times where like I need and want to be by myself to breathe to like take in the energy to focus to ground myself my now my presence together you know what I mean and really take in and enjoy the surroundings because I love to take in the beautiful things around me and it was a beautiful view it was a beautiful day it was a beautiful statue so um and then i checked out some of the things that people were selling i don't think i bought anything at that time i looked over at sex and home and i was remembering all the energy and everything that we did that day um i took a lot of really great pictures and videos and i had actually some other tourists take photos of me which was really nice um and then at Saxe Human, that's actually technically where I got this ink and cross um, that my Italian cousins helped me buy. Thank you so much. Um, and I chose the white one, but they came in all different colors and uh, patterns. And um, yeah, I really wanted the white one, but I think I already explained in my other video of Cusco Peru travel vlog. Check that out. Um, the link will be in the description and my videos are up already. Um, talking about my experience there um, and this cross's significance to me and to the Incan people and to the people who live in Peru, the Peruvian people today in Cusco told me, all the tour guides told me, a lot about this symbol um, but it was technically at Saxe Human when I was with my cousins the first day that they helped me buy this cross it was very nice of them I didn't have a lot of soul lace left I didn't have a lot of cash um, so it was actually really nice of them to help me buy this because the ATMs were charging um, a significant fee from my bank as foreign exchange um, and I didn't have a lot of cash left at that point in the in the trip so it was really nice of them and I really appreciate them buying me this and I've worn it every single day since I've gotten back and I really hope nothing happens to it because I really love it um I got you know my my Peruvian silver rings in this cross and then I've got my two birds on the um hummingbird in the condor like this is real Peruvian silver earrings real Peruvian silver rings and then the ink and cross that I wear um but I love it and yeah but also I just like the purity of it the white light um because it symbols the soul so um anyway I'm wearing red because the Peruvian flag is red and white so it's only fitting and um i hope you enjoyed this video um there's definitely going to be a machu picchu video coming and then i have some other travel videos coming from this year 
with other best real phone video clips and um, parts of my trip from Spain and Italy and as well as the road trip I took with my sister girl this past November throughout the United States. Um, we went down south to Texas, Mississippi, um, Louisiana, New Orleans, and um, Tennessee and Kentucky. So um, Oklahoma, Missouri, yep. So we took the Route 66 partially and we went down south to Dallas and we came back up around. Um, and I was documenting that journey as well. So more travel vlogging soon to come. Peace, love, and respect to you all. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video to support the algorithms and to support my channel growth. Please subscribe to my channel and get updates for all of my beautiful travel vlog videos to come. Ciao.